thank you very much, um, Liz. Uh, it's a honor to be speaking here. And what is very important to note that this is the longest stretch of democracy Nigeria has actually experienced in over 61 years of its existence. Uh, we are talking about six electoral circles with the forthcoming elections during less than 14 months. It's, uh, and, but currently, it's not just about the failure of democracy to deliver developments to the people, but more about the raging conflict and insecurity pervading different parts of the entity called Nigeria. And importantly, there are lots of structural issues responsible for this. First and foremost is that of marginalization, both real and perceived. So we are talking about people feeling marginalized economically, politically, um, ethnically, socially on different bases in the country itself. And this has led to lots of non-state actors to all of a sudden evolve, taking up arms against the state. Another very important factor closely linked to that will be the uneven handed of the Nigerian government. So one minute, Boko Haram people are said to get amnesty for the Eastern Security Network, in the, uh, which is a secessionist movement, the arms well, part of the secessionist movement, IPOB, in the Southeast, do not even get a seat at the table to dialogue. So this is very difficult for people to believe. Then you are talking about a high level of poverty and exclusion in a country where more than 50% are young people. And they feel and they see on daily basis that the political class are plundering the commonwealth itself. This has allowed grievances to grow and translate into rebellion in the country. Now, while elections are important, and like I said earlier, we've had six elections, six, uh, these elections have also been a source of conflict, especially when results are disputed. And a very important one that comes here, of course, is the winner takes all attitudes. And in reaction to it, protest movements is now becoming a very important thing in Nigeria. When you see the young people frequently going onto the streets to protest as a means of civil disobedience. But while you talk about this protest, what we should note is that with each protest, it becomes more brutal with more lives lost uh, successively, really. But all this violence we are talking about in Nigeria is nothing new. They can actually be classified as repeat violence. So when you talk about the um, conflict or secessionist agitation, which is leading to a lot of deaths in the southeast part of the country, it evokes. It evolved from the arrested civil war between 1967 and 1970 and the refusal of any successive government to bring closure to this in such a way that justice is seen to be done. The same for the banditry, which is now in the news more than Boko Haram. This is a repeat violence with the last one being in 1972. The only thing that has actually changed is the scale and the numbers of actors involved in this violent conflict. And put together everything, you now have ins insecurity, you have more state actors all fighting. So Nigeria is not fighting one group like Boko Haram or the Islamic State in the West African province, but it, it's up in hands against the ESN, um, the bandits, the just every group, kidnappers in a country. And when you zero everything, it goes back to the lack of justice. The heavy handed security approach towards curbing violent conflict itself, perceived marginalization, a broken justice system where citizens only see corruption and believe that justice delayed is already justice denied, or there is even an impossibility to actually experience justice in this entity called Nigeria. Now, immediately to the ask and dealing with it, I think three things are very, very important that the US government can actually do for Nigeria at this point in time. 
One, of course, is ensuring that there is civilian oversight over security forces. How do we get more people involved in that in such a way that we've, we prevent reciprocal radicalization, where more people will then keep picking up arms against the Nigerian state? The second issue is looking at the youth bulge, the poverty in the country, and seeming children, not even youth now, who are out of school and who lack health care system and jobs. Any response that the U.S. will be having in its plan is one that targets these sets of people to prevent violent conflict for becoming, from becoming more aggravated in the future. And thirdly, and lastly, actually, her focus should not just be supporting the elections work. It should actually be looking at the quality of democracy itself. And looking at the quality of democracy as a peace building strategy and a conflict with, uh, prevention one, we have to put all our conflict prevention framework into that one that makes democracy more enduring and deliver to the people to prevent a breakdown into anarchy in the future. Thank you very much.